Hi, we are presenting our EE599 project on spatial temporal graph convolution network for skeleton based action resolution. Coming on with the motivation behind our project, human action recognition is an important topic in computer vision research, focusing on applications in robotics, surveillance, and human computer interaction. Using skeletonized data in action recognition is an hot topic since they are invariant to viewpoint and appearance. They can be represented as graphs, with bones as edges and joints as nodes. Coming on to graphs, a graph is a collection of nodes and edges used in various real-world applications. The nodes and edges provide a data relationship which can be represented using an adjacency matrix. The image in the right hand side represents the body joints. The joints are represented as nodes in the graph and the bones are represented as the edges. The dataset which we are using is a kinetic dataset. It consists of around 300k video clips with 400 human action classes. Each video clip is extracted from YouTube of a duration of 10 seconds which is sampled as 30 fps. After skeleton info extraction, the feature vector obtained is of dimension of 3 for every node. Since we are considering 18 nodes for each person and for each frame it will have a 18 by 3 dimension feature vector. This is an overview of the entire algorithm. It starts with video extraction. We are using an open source library called OpenPose which will extract the skeletal information. This skeletal information is then divided into two parts the edge information and the node information. The features of the nodes and edges are then fed into a spatial temporal graph convolution network. At the end, a software classifier is used to classify the action. OpenPOS OpenPOS is an open source library which is developed by CMU. It inputs a video frame and outputs a conference map of the joints. It is similar to a CNN network. It is a, it's a two-stage convolution neural network. We open posts give us a flexibility of choosing the number of nodes and choosing the number of persons in each frame. This is the architecture of open posts. Instead of directly feeding the raw image file, it, a pre-processing stage is applied. In the pre-processing stage, the images are passed through a convolution layer which is similar to a VGG19 and a feature map is obtained. This provides a structural information of individual frame and then it is fed to a two-stage model. The two-stage model consists of, the first stage will consist of a part affinity field and the second stage will produce a conference map. It is similar to a convolution layer with consecutive convolution blocks. Here, each convolution block will consist of, again, three consecutive 3x3 three three kernel. The outputs are then concatenated and fed to the next convolution block. This is a working principle of open pose. So the input image is then, the features from the input image is extracted and fed to the two stage network. The first stage network will produce a part affinity field. The part affinity field will produce a, con a connection of the limbs. It outputs a two dimensional vector representing the orientation and the location of the limb. It provides the association of the limb. After every it iterative stage, the part affinity field is concatenated with the input feature map and runs for a number of iteration to produce a refined prediction. To guide the network, a L2 loss function is used between the estimated predictions and the ground fields. The refined output is then fed to the second stage. The second stage will produce confidence map for individual nodes. Each confidence map produce is a two produces a two-dimensional representation of the probability that the body part is located at that pixel. Again, it runs for a number of iterations. However, the number of iterations in the second stage is less compared to the first stage since a, since a precise prediction is obtained from the first stage. The final, the final map is the aggregation of individual conference map after non-maximal suppression to obtain a single discrete points for each node. Again, a L2 function is used to guide the network. Since not all the training images are labeled, to face the issue with missing annotation, a binary weight is multiplied with the loss function. This is an overview of skeletal feature extraction as discussed in the earlier slides. 300 frames are extracted. The extraction algorithm is set for extracting the features for a max of 5% per frame and 18 joints for each person. 
The feature for each node consists of x, y, which are the spatial locations, and the conference code C. While for edge, it will be the spatial central locations xg and yg and the orientation angle for each joint. For training, we are considering a batch size of 256 data for each 300 frame at a maximum of 2% per frame. We are going to modify the input dimension in such a way that it can be fed into a convolutional 2D network in a similar way to images. The dimensions nt m into v into c is modified into n by m into ctv where n by m is a new batch size each element is a n by n by m consists of three channels which is x y c and considering one channel from it we will be getting one 300 by 18 matrix where 300 corresponds to 300 frames and 18 corresponds to 18 nodes in each frame now let us take a look into the stgcn convolution operation the spatial convolution is done with a 1 by 1 kernel which will ensure that the features from one frame is localized with that particular frame and does not overlap with the other frame. The spatial convolution will sum up all the values from all the three channels and give us a single value for each node. The spatial con uh, uh, convolution output is then multiplied with the adjacency matrix which will form a graphical connection for a particular skeleton. This multiplication output is fed into a temporal convolution layer. This is done using a 9 by 1 kernel. The spatial convolution will track the movement of the node through the time. In 2D convolution, the weight coefficients are multiplied in a spatial order around the central pixel location. In case of graphs, this can be done by labeling process. The, pa the partition strategy comes into place for labeling process of all the nodes, where the order is defined by the node label around the root node. The indexing is done according to the spatial order. There are different uh, labeling process of which the common ones are uniform labeling, distance partitioning and spatial configuration partitioning. In case of uniform based, it is a straightforward strategy where the same weights are multiplied to the feature vector in the neighboring nodes. In distance partitioning, the nodes at similar distance from the root node are labeled same and multiplied with the same weights. The spatial configuration is different from this board too. In this strategy, the labeling process is based on the spatial location of the nodes or joins. We divide the neighbor, neighbor set into three subsets, the root node, the centripetal group where the neighboring nodes are closer to the center of gravity than the root node, the cent and the centripetal group where the neighboring no node is far away from the center of gravity than the root node. This is a final STGCN architecture. The architecture consists of 10 STGCN blocks for nodes and 10 STGCN blocks for edge processing. As discussed earlier, each STGCN block consists of a spatial convolution layer, multiplication with the adjacency matrix and a temporal convolution layer. The outputs from both the blocks are combined together by a shared convolution neural network, which will give us the probability of different classes. These are the results obtained. The results are compared for node GCN, edge GCN and the hybrid model of combination of both node and edge. The total training, set, training data of 246k samples have been used. It has been tested on 19k samples. The AWS instance use is P2x large. The following are the hyperparameters have been used. The number of epochs is 30, batch size of 256, a learning rate of 0.1 and a dropout of 0.5. The time taken for training for node is 14 hours, for edge is 15 and the combination will take a longer time of 26 hours. As we can see the top end accuracy for the hybrid model is more than the node and edge. It can be seen similar for the top 5 accuracy. Thank you.